How you doing, guys? It's your boy Nando, and you know what it is. It's the Pound for Pound Boxing Show in association with Seconds Out Coffee. Today, I've got a very special guest. He's a problem. It's Mikey Mickinson. Let's see if we can get Mikey on right now. How you doing, mate? Yeah, all good. All good. Can't complain. You... That's good, man. First of all, Happy New Year. And uh, thank you for giving us your time as always, mate. Yeah, no worries, mate. Happy New Year to you. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Mikey, what an amazing 14 months for you. Let's let's just go through that. I remember in the last 14 months, uh, you fought in an empty arena on the MTK Global Show against Harkin. What a performance that was at that time in October 2020. Great yeah. performance, unanimous decision. Roll on later. Chris Congo in Gibraltar, in Gibraltar. And what a way uh, to mark your way um, to the big stage of the uh, global as well. So I think the, the video card, can you hear me? Yeah, it looks like there's a bit bad signal. Mikey, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Cut out a little bit as you were talking. Is that all good now? Yeah, all good. Perfect. What I'm saying is, <clears throat> roll on a few months after that, you fought Chris Congo in Gibraltar. What a performance that was. You know, your your debut on a big stage like that with Matchroom. What a performance. Month later, big signing. You signed with Matchroom. And then you made your UK Matchroom debut in the Garden as well. And now you're making your US debut. Has it, has it sunk in yet? Has it, like, I, knew, I know that ever since we've... It's been like three years we've spoken to you. And we've interviewed you a few times. You always believed in your ability. You always knew that one day you will get to this stage. But has it hit you properly in that what you have achieved in the last 14 months? As they say, trust the process. Um, the, there's been many a times of nagged and and whinged in because I always believed I, I, I was good enough and I belonged on the big stage. It's just it's a tough sport to be able to get there. And it's not always talent and, and, and stuff like that. But I'm finally here. It, it was a long time coming. Um, and I've got amazing opportunities. Like since, even to be honest, since signing with MTK back in 2018, I've been able to get some good opportunities, great opportunities. They've secured me some great stuff. In the last 12 months, they've secured me, they've secured me some amazing opportunities. So... A lot of love goes there to my management team of MTK. Now being promoted as well by um, Matchroom. Like, I'm in a great position. I've been given an opportunity of a lifetime, which I'm sure we're going to speak about in a minute. But, um, yeah, I'm happy and very focused. And, you know, like, like I say, I was born to be on this big stage. I was born to have my name in lights, and now it's finally here. Yeah, brilliant. It's, it's amazing because... When you signed with MTK, it was a new first, like, kind of like the away fighter, and you had to prove yourself with them Cold as well. Of, I had to uh, take, take <clears throat> some tough opportunities. I remember my first fight with MTK was in uh, Civic Hall in Greys. Um, couldn't even sell enough tickets to do a six rounder. So I had to do a four rounder against Kev McCauley. And fast forward three years, I don't ever have trouble selling tickets and now i'm headlining shows in america um but yeah shortly after that kevin mccauley fight i've got uh i had a title but i fought sam mcness defending my title against sam mcness but i fought him in his hometown in east london and uh, not a lot of people thought i could win i had to prove myself to everybody i had to really prove myself to everybody fight after fight and to get people onto my side and now now like i've proven time and time and time and time again i've proven people wrong and look where i am now so uh yeah i'm happy i'm happy trust the process look, as they say 
you look happy and you deserve it as well. And um, like I said, we, we've been talking for like three years. <clears throat> this channel has interviewed you a few times. The thing I liked about you and Lee Eaton warned me about this is that you're not scared to call out the big names. So when we spoke to you like three years ago, I remember that time, you know, Marku was calling out Ben, Congo was calling out, I think, uh, Josh Kelly. I think Ben wanted Josh Kelly. You know, the domestic scene wanted each other, basically, like that. The name that always came out of your mouth, even three years ago, even two years ago, I think, Virgil Ortiz Jr. It's always been that guy that you've requested. Remember, you always mentioned this guy. Lee Eaton, when I've interviewed him and spoke to him, he's always said, Mike, he's always telling me, when you're going to get me that Ortiz fight, I always tell him, calm down, we're going to get, like, in future, you're not ready yet, you're not ready yet. And now, you finally get to get your hands on, on your man. And um, did you always knew that your your partner will, will cross and you, you'll fight this um, this man? Yeah, I'm not happy to be best in the UK. You know what I mean? Like, Congo, well, beating Congo, like, not many people wanted to fight Chris Congo. I said yes. I went to Gibraltar. I beat him. Like, not really many people fight each other in, in the top 10, which is a shame. I was there for ages. Who who in the UK wants it with me? Nobody really... What like I, I couldn't get anybody except Chris Congo, but I beat Chris Congo. But even before then, I think maybe like about six months before I beat Chris Congo, I messaged Lee and like, get me all tees. <laughs> you know, why not? I'm not scared of any of them. I'm like, okay, I fought at a... I fought at a lower level than he has. But you can look through 21 fights of Michael McKinson. I'm 21 and I. You can look through 21 fights and not find a fight where I've looked vulnerable, looked shaky, looked in trouble at any point. You know what I mean? I've never been in trouble. I've never shown vulnerabilities. And I've fought live opponents every time. You know what I mean? Like my last seven opponents have a combined record of 104 wins and five losses. You, like, you'll struggle to get a, a fighter that could match that that re like record of opponents. My last four have a record of 51 wins and one loss. And I've hardly, like, hardly broke a sweat. Like, that last fight was, was easy. So, um, I, like, firstly, it's a big jump fighting Virgil Ortiz in America. It's a big jump. I deserve it. What else do people want me to do? Want me to carry on beating the likes of Premier's Lorenowski on points and, and stuff like that? Too easy for me. Like, throw me to the wolves. Throw me to the wolves. I'm ready. You're definitely ready because I believe, and I'm not just saying it, I believe if you look at his record, 18-0, 18 KOs, well, you can answer this for me. I know the answer. You can answer this uh, for the for the viewers as well. What makes you different com compared to those 18 opponents that he's knocked out? Because he's 18 and 0. We know he's a hard hitter, but he has vulnerabilities, and we've seen that before. What makes you different from those opponents? Well, the first, I've got my own. None of, no one that he's fought has their own. So they've all experienced losses before. I've never experienced an L in my pro career. I haven't. And I'm not planning on experiencing any losses. You know what I mean? Um, so he's not fought anyone as fresh. Like, everybody that he's fought has been hit more times than I have, probably. <laughs> like, I'm, like, I haven't really been hit. The few times my chin has been tested, it's been solid. You know? It's been solid. So, in terms of what have I got different than most others? Firstly, I've got my own. Firstly, you can't hit me. You can't hit me. And, you know, like, I'm not going to the other side of the world with my own, with my city and my country behind me, to lose. You know, I've got an opportunity of a lifetime. I know it's a massive step up. But, you know, I've got the chance to, to change everything for Everything for me. Do you know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, let them doubt me. Let them write me off. They're all watching Virgil Ortiz. They're all going to expect him to walk through me. All the uneducated people, 
Ortiz are gonna, is going to walk through McKinson in three rounds. Let them, let them say what they want. Opinions don't mean anything. I'm there to really spoil everything. And do you believe, obviously you believe you can beat him, but do you believe by beating him, you're, it's a shock to the world? Do they really, do they really see you as that much of an underdog, in your opinion? I think since the fight's been announced, uh, the UK public and like the boxing people in the UK, they've kind of come on my side over the last 12 months. They're, they're saying it, it's not a walk in the park for Ortiz, which it ain't. It's not a walk in yeah. the park. Like, I think a lot of people will be shocked when I win. A lot of people will be, but I won't. I won't be shocked. My team won't be shocked because I'm a problem for anybody in the world. Well, I, I will be shocked if you're shocked if you win because you've been calling this guy out for a while. So, obviously, yeah. calling someone out, you have to believe in yourself that you're better than him. That's exactly. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. I never thought I'd be given an opportunity like this to, to go over to America to fight Golden Boy's Golden Boy. You know? And, like, winning this changes my future and that's all I plan on doing. Obviously, you've been an away fighter before, and you you even said already in this interview. I can't remember who you said the opponent was, but in East London, you 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 know, in a hostile crowd. But that's nothing compared to a hostile no. crowd of Yanks. So how how would you deal with that? Do you does it bother you at all? Because I know no, you have some UK fans, and we're always heard in the arena, even if we're only that five or ten thousand compared to all of them. We've got the best best fans in the world when it comes to boxing. Everyone knows that. Yeah. You're going to have your crowd there, but does the hostile crowd have any effect on you, do you think? That will help me raise my game. Like, I know I'm going to the Lions' den. I know I'm I'm going into a, a crowd full of hostility and, you know, like me coming from the UK over to fight the golden boy over there. Um, I'm going to be getting given stick and, and stuff like that. But I I bet you all the Americans will love me. I will leave America with so many more fans and so many more supporters. Um, like I really do think they'll love me. And um, like in terms of the hostility and like I that will help me raise my game. Like I've like I say I've I've been the B side probably four four times in my career. Um it's helped me raise my game. Now, being the B side in America, it'll only it'll only help me raise my game. You're highly ranked in the WBO. I looked at box rec today, but overall, in the and I was surprised. I thought you they would have you would have been higher than that on box rec in the whole welterweight. You're ranked 32, and he's ranked number mm. four. Mm. Is it important to you as well? Obviously, this fight changes your career and opens opportunities for you. But is it important for you to reach that number in the top 10? Of course. Of course. There's lots of goals in, in my career, lots of goals in boxing. Not even in boxing, but in boxing. Um, like, to get an opportunity to fight a genuine top 10. A genuine top 10 um, is amazing. I keep saying, oh, it's a great opportunity. Like, yeah, it is good. And, like, I'm, I'm happy that I've got given it, but... I've got to win. There's one thing getting the opportunity. Everyone's are oh, congratulating me. Oh, well done. You've got this opportunity going to America. People dream of stuff like that. I've got to win. And that's the only thing that's on my mind. Like I've been obsessed with Virgil Ortiz since the end of November when I, I first heard about it. So, um, so yeah, that's all that's on my mind is going and winning. Uh, like, and then celebrating. Of course. With um with this win, obviously I asked you this before the Congo fight because the what makes this fight exciting as well and what made the Congo fight two undefeated fighters someone's O has to go. I asked you this at the Congo before the Congo fight, so I have to ask you for this because it's a big opportunity. What does it mean for your career if you win? What I'm not saying we're looking past Ortiz, you winning. What do you think is next after that? Um, I, I don't know what's next, but winning does change my future. 
like changes my future winning like the fight in general is life changing but winning changes my future um and everyone around me so um i wouldn't know what's next after beating ortiz i'm number one by the wbo and if i can't get that then i deserve a homecoming <laughs> you know what i mean so um all that's on my mind i haven't really thought about what's next um i haven't looked past march 19th because i know how big and how important it is for my future winning this so um so yeah that's all i've got on my mind but you can just imagine the opportunities and and what could be next can't you so it's huge just in your opinion beating ortiz could you see yourself fighting Bud at the end of the year? Could could do you think that oh, that could open the opportunity to get that world title shot? It does open the opportunities, but he's probably looking at other things at the moment, isn't he? So I don't know how it all works and where it could have been changed about by then. I don't know. But in terms of getting a world title fight, it's it's in my sights. It ain't too far away. It ain't too far away. I can see it. So um, so yeah, like. All that's been gone on in my head since probably the last six weeks is getting my arm raised in America. Getting my arm raised in America. After that, we can start to see what could be next and everything. But it's huge. My future's huge after this. 100%. Let's talk about um, Crawford for a second. So I've seen online that you've been sparring uh, 140 pound undisputed champion Josh Taylor. First of all, how was that? Uh, great, great experience. Obviously, I've got I've got quite a while left. I've got nine weeks left, and um, so I've been up there a couple of times over the last month. And um, after like now, like he's he's fighting a southpaw before I'm fighting Ortiz, so it's he needs southpaw sparring and to be gi given the opportunity. I'm only going to learn from even being in the same gym and like he's a, a world-class southpaw, a world-class fighter. So it's only going to benefit me. Uh, even the days I didn't spar him, it, it was great just to look over and see how he does things. And for me, I'm a student. I'm like, it's, it's all good learning and it, it's only beneficial. Obviously, as it gets closer, I, I think not, it was nine weeks yesterday to, to my fight will focus and be a bit more selfish on getting the orthodox sparring. Obviously, Josh is a southpaw, um, but the experience in general has, has been amazing for me to mix at that level and, and to be able to spar such an accomplished fighter um, and hold my own uh, has, has been great. It's only been learning. Obviously, I know you said your mind is on March 9th. <laughs> Ask that, but maybe you thought about it. Maybe it did cross your mind a little bit. When you're sparring Josh Taylor, right? And there's these rumors that he could fight, go up to one four seven in your division, and he could fight um, Crawford. Did it cross your mind that okay, if I beat Ortiz, this could be one day the WBO champion that I'm I'm gonna face in an all domestic uh, fight? Did it cross your mind at all with that? No, it hasn't really. It hasn't really crossed my mind. For me, it's just seeing how I am uh, mixing with world class, elite world class fighters. Um, because me, I'm always learning. I've got lots to learn <laughs> and lots to improve on. But I, I know that I can, I can get there. And um, beating Ortiz, I haven't thought about ah, oh, this I could fight him one day. But beating Ortiz, I will be fighting that level opponent next. You know what I mean? I will be, regardless of who it is. Um, but yeah, no, I, have, I haven't thought about it. It's been great to get that experienced and like very grateful. Uh, and yeah, like the the future is McKinson after I beat Ortiz. Trust me. Just in no disrespect, just as an opinion as a boxing fan for yourself, who wins that fight? Josh Taylor versus Crawford, in your opinion? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know because we don't know what Josh Taylor would be like at 147. Like, like Crawford is pound for pound 
top three. I would say Josh Taylor is pound for pound. Top, maybe top five. Maybe top five. Um, because of what he's done in 16 fights is incredible. <laughs> is incredible. Um, so him going up and beating Crawford wouldn't surprise me. It's a huge ask because you're going up to a weight class to fight one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. But it wouldn't surprise me. Um, but what he's achieved in 16 fights, like he can't achieve anything more at 140, can he? No. So, but he's got a fight. He's fighting Jack Catterall. Great fight. Um, be good to watch as a boxing fan, being both from the UK. And more importantly, me helping Josh out for a couple of rounds sparring in his camp. So it'd be good to watch as a fan. Uh, and, and yeah, like the few, like who knows where everyone will be in a year's time. I don't know where everyone will be in a year's time. Like me, I plan on being, fighting for a world title in a year's time. For sure. I never say if I'm one. I'm a positive person. I always say when. So when you become world champion, yeah, can you see yourself moving up to one five four? Uh I don't know. One day I probably will. I, I've been making one four seven my whole career. I've been a pro since I was nineteen twenty. So um, I, I've done well to wait a long time. But over the over the years, I've learned more about nutrition. I've of, uh, even this year, I've bought, I've bought a, a, a nutritionist on board that does like a lot of testings with me, and I found out I was eating, I weren't eating enough, and, and like little things like that, like them little one percent you bring into the team make a big difference. And for now, I've got no plans on moving up to one four seven, up uh, to one five four because like, I'll do one four seven. Like, okay, it's never easy, but I. I don't have to go to any drastic measures like like people do. Do you know what I mean? I make it early as well. So um, yeah, I'm not a one five four fighter yet. Anyway, one more question, Mikey. What's going to happen on March nineteenth? Like I said, I'll keep I'll keep thinking about it. It's like envisioned into my brain, and all that I can see is my hand getting raised and everybody in shock. And, and me telling everybody, I did tell you, I told you all. And, and that's all that I keep thinking about. And as I think about it, I'm getting more and more excited because the days are getting closer. Every tough day I have in camp, every tough day I have in camp, I'm getting more and more confident that I'm going to pull this off. Um, like I said, if you look at me, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so focused, but also so happy, which is so important. Um, I can't wait to go to America and win over the American fans. That'd be brilliant. <clears throat> Do you have a final message for those British fans that are going to be travelling to America with you, supporting you, and the ones that can't are going to be tuning in that night, even in the early hours, supporting you? Yeah, I know I've got an ever-growing fan base, and especially over the last 12 months, it's been huge, so I'm I'm so humbled by all the support I've been getting, all the messages I've been getting over the last couple of weeks since it's been announced. And even the people that are going to try and get out there to watch me fight, it it means a lot, you know. I know I've got a lot of love and support coming my way. Um, and, yeah, like I, I, I promise I'll do everyone proud. Brilliant. Mikey, I just want to say first, congratulations, not just getting this fight, but what you have achieved in the last 14 months is unbelievable. You deserve it. You're a hard-working fighter. And I don't know anyone more deserving in the sport than, than you. So I want to wish you the best of luck on March 19th. And again, always a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you for the opportunity. Brilliant, mate. No worries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Stay safe. <laughs> See you later.